back, comic friends. I'm Travis. I'm still the disembodied voice. You sure? And this is? No capes. Yeah, I see you messed you it all up. Laugh. Okay, so this is um, non superhero books for the week of September 7th, 2016. Jumping right in with probably one of the best comic books that's coming out right now. Absolutely. I'm always so happy to see <sighs> that in the book. Sheriff of Babylon, issue number 10. So good, once again. Go read it. Just, just that's say, that's just my that's my opinion on the book and whatnot. Oh, no, that's the only thing I got to say. But well, go pick it up the first could trade. Be all we would have to say. I mean, it's once you saw it, you wouldn't need us to say anything else. Yeah, once you get into it, it's so good. And once again, a whole bunch of talking, and yet the that tension, whole bunch of talking is the amazing. tension, the tension, oh uh, the tension and action, just verbally, the action that's in it is absolutely nuts. Most of the book is a, is kind of a a stare down with. Um, one of our potentially bad, well, he's definitely a bad element, um, in a suicide vest. You know, they're in Iraq, got a suicide vest on, you know, all C4 strapped to him and whatnot. And it's a three way conversation between him, Sophie, and. I knew his name until you. Yeah, um, our, our Iraqi police officer that's kind of been around since the beginning and has of it. He lost his entire family. Uh, but, uh, you know, um, so. A. Yeah. Absol, Absol, I don't know. Anyway, um, this three-way conversation is just incredibly tense because, of course, this guy is starting to blow them up in, in a way, you know. And there's this great conversation about uh, about America and how America, excuse me, about how America operates and that he's George Washington and all this stuff. And there's this. Oh, it's Sophie delivers this awesome line towards the end of the book where he's you know, he's basically been bragging this whole time, and Sophie kind of. Lays it lays it down as to how it really is as far as she's concerned. She's like, "You say you're George Washington? I'm shock and awe." She slaps a hand on the guy's C4. And you're she just like, really, really is. I mean, yeah, she's it's a like badass. All hail. She's a badass. I mean, things don't always go her way. Clearly, I mean, it's not it's not like she's just a power of everything and whatnot. But she's got some serious cojones. Yes. I mean, she is just absolutely. And that conversation is alternated with the conversation between Mr. Gung Ho, we can't wait to get this guy. Bob. Age, Bob, of course that's his name. It's just such a... Bob and, and Chris, our main character from the very beginning, right. who's the training the police officers. And who is and, so not impressed with this Right, and, and Bob really has kind of screwed Chris's life up. I mean, this whole thing so that's much. happening largely is because of Bob. Bob started an operation with this Iraqi guy, this Iraqi guy who was a policeman who died in the first issue. And we kind of hear that story a little bit, and some of the other workings goes on. And cl clearly, this guy is a, a total idiot. I mean, every operation he's involved with is wrecked. The people die around it and whatnot. I mean, I'm not going to go to the details as to what and he's in as the to what happens. Of being super excited to do it again. Right. He's like, just go in. You know, there, there, there's there's they're supposed to be waiting for a, a signal, a call to say call. this is the right guy, or or come in and save us, or that sort of thing. And the guy just keeps going, just go in, just charge in, just charge in. And of course, you know, we're reading this whole tense thing with this guy in there with the suicide vest. They yeah, could, and we know they could just nuke the hell out of everybody and wreck everything. You know, and this guy just wants to go charge it in. He's a Bob. He's an idiot. Yeah, he really is. But oh, such he's, a tense. Yes. Such a tense book. I'm so glad they decided to keep with this book. It actually was supposed to have ended at issue eight. was supposed to be the end. They extended it about an issue or two in. They went, oh, it's just too good. We're, we're going to you know, let you do 12 issues. And then they decided this is so great that we're, this is season one. So when we get to issue Yay. 12, there'll be season two. And I don't know what season two is going to be like. If it'll be the same people or it'll be a totally different situation or whatever all the same people are on board though just a, a brilliant brilliant comic as just far as really, yeah. extremely extremely tense and really 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 good yep yeah? yes <sighs> so this is um ever after from the pages of fables issue number one new miracle book uh written by uh justice and sturge matt sturge i know as had plenty of experience writing um fables stuff he wrote the, some of the um, spin-offs, the Cinderella's um, things off of that. He wrote um, um, the Jack stuff, Jack and the Big Blue Ox, you know, all the all right. the Jack Fable sure. stuff. He wrote all of that, so clearly he has a, right. a, a handle on the idea of how Fables operates and whatnot. Uh, but this is all these stories with kind of some new people and some old elements and whatnot. Um, this is after all the stuff that happened in the, what, 20-some 
trades worth of yes. Fable comics that there are. A lot of Fables. Of which we never read the end of. No. We read parts of it. I read yeah. the beginning. And right. I really enjoyed it. it. Just. But anyway, so how was this book for you? It was fine. I mean, it, it, it was... I, it was nice seeing some of the characters that I like, like Snow and... The Bigsby. wolf Bigsby, Bigsby. Mm -hmm. and they're one of their their children. The <laughs> last time we saw them, they were literally infants in diapers. Still, yeah, they were they were pups, and it was it was fun seeing that. And it's kind of like um, spy, you know. Really, it's kind of spy stuff in a way. Uh, an element of spy kind stuff of and an, uh, uh, right you know, 007, but with apocalyptic consequences in the background because I mean, they fight zombies in this and stuff like that. Right, it's it's like certain elements of magic are out in the open now, and they're trying to fix things mm -hmm. and keep things. Mm -hmm. Here's my problem with it: having not finished Fables, and if you're somebody who's never read Fables at all, what the hell? What it, what is any of this crap? I suppose. Do you, know but even, do you know anyone who but even, picked it up who has never read any no, fables and didn't know uh, anything about it? No, but I mean, I, I, I'm assuming this is all about this is all about Vertigo trying to find an audience because they lost so much of their audience when fables ended, and the other stuff that they're trying to produce I, that we kind of feel like we're, they're probably trying to grab for the fables audience. Are you Red Thorn and that sort of thing hasn't been grabbing it? So let's bring some back something that literally has fables in the yeah, in the, the title, title. Um, but. For this being a first issue and me not having read all that Fable stuff, there's lots of elements that, I mean, I know because I kind of know what happened sure. at the end just because I kind of pay attention to what other people are talking about sure. and stuff. But some really bad story elements if I don't know that stuff. True. I don't know who any of these people are. You know, the, you know, there's just a lot of stuff there that... Yeah, that, we don't know that why needed to be has such an attitude. And, well, and... and, 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 and Who's in the open? Who's not in the open anymore? As far as all that kind of stuff goes, none of that stuff is explained well enough, in my opinion, for not to to not know how the last thing ended and what went on with that. There are elements that I thought needed to be better. Not saying that this wouldn't pique somebody's interest who doesn't know anything about the stuff, but there's glaringly holes though in the whys. Yeah, I can understand and, why you're where you're coming from with that. And if they wanted to, why are, why are all the readers? They, they don't, they don't do a very good job of explaining why there's these, you know, Hansel and Gretel and, and Little Bo Peep and are those code names? Are they really those people? No, they are those people. I know they are, but oh, I'm saying from a reading aspect sure. of not reading the fables, nothing in here really says that that's what it is. They kind of loosely say, oh, we're At the, beginning, we're the fairy tales gone real. Huh? Yeah, yeah that's true. So yes, new new readers might have difficulty with that. True, you have a very good point. Thought it needed to be better done. Even for me as an old reader, I thought it needed to be better done. Unfollow issue number eleven. I really like this book. Yeah, I just really really enjoy it's, it. It's dowling back on art again, so the art is just top notch, um, kind of stuff. Um, continue to have the same kind of crazy elements with these um, moments where. I mean, it seems grounded in reality. You've got these people that have 140 people who are going to inherit these billions of dollars, and the less of them there are by the time they go to get the money, the more money each of them going to have. So clearly there's some people doing some unhanded stuff yes, going on in it. the the better. But then there's these weird metaphysical things, these animals that are walking around talking to them and whatnot. They're like right. spirit, spirit animals. animals. But, but it's and not just the Dave. the Russian guy that but turns it's not, into a bear but it's not again. Just, but it's not just Dave that's seen it now. Exactly. I mean, I mean, Raven. Um, it's Raven, right? Raven, yeah. the, the Iraqi woman. She is she is seeing this Russian kind of go back and forth between being the you know stereotypical Russian bear, a, you know, kind of An thing. actual bear. Right. Who says he's going to eat them. Right. So... So I don't know if that's what I she's know. just hearing or whatever. Exactly. And, and then there's then there's the mask. This seems to be quasi. You know the guy. The guy's name is the mask. Rubenstein. He seems to be somewhat omnipotent and that he can kind of see what's going on. And then we get this huge reveal about this. Oh, about Akira. This, Akira is this um, Asian artist, figure. right? Who who wrote a book and supposedly some of the elements are are in the book. And we get Courtney, who's our rich snotty girl who um, decides to read the book because things are really getting crappy really in, his, in his compound because he's kind of gone nuts. He's in this room, this empty room, throwing, news, throwing paper airplanes around and trying to cut a video of the end times. And she reads his book and she gets, she's bored. 
with the book even. So she skips to the end and reads the end, and she realizes that they aren't there being saved, that more than likely they're there to be a giant sacrifice. Yep. And the mask is seemingly, or somebody is coming to potentially do a strike on them. And yep. so she's freaking out at the end. Yeah, While people are sitting around barbecuing, she's like, oh my god, I'm going to get out of here. <laughs> exactly. You know? Yeah. And so that, that was interesting. And Raven almost loses her life to somebody who is working for the mask. No, I don't know if he's no, working for the mask. Some, he's he's just somebody, somebody who wants right. the money. Right. They, the, a lot of those Russian guys just figure yeah, if they she, if they keep one of them. Doesn't she, he say, if you're, are you one of the 140? And, and, and she, she says, says yes. And he goes, well, yes. I'm not. But somebody is, and they hired me. Can we look? I think that's what they said. Well, yeah, but all those Russian guys are trying to kill off most of them and keep that's a couple true. around. They're that's not true. protecting any of them because they feel like they need to protect them. They are, they are, um, they are protecting them because they figure if there's only a couple of them left, then they can cash in on them. Oh, Rubenstein is. And he's paying me. You're right. It yeah. is the mask. Yep. Yep. And it, it looks pretty serious until Dave yep. steps in. Yep. And takes the advice of his leopard friend at least a little. Right. His leopard friend is essentially telling him to be a prey or predator. Right. He has to make up his mind. Right. Yep. Really good book. Yep. I really enjoy it. It's much better than I thought it would be based on the premise. And sure. I've, I've said that every time, so sure. I have to say it again. Sure. Smart art. People should be reading it. That was issue 11. Pick up a trade, if nothing else. But get on the singles. Get on the singles. Because they're just going to skyrocket if you're a speculator. Because that TV show is going to come out at some point. We'll see. Well, the books all do tend to go up when there's a TV show threatening. Yeah. So. But the cool thing is... is the, it's actually good. The book is actually good. So that's the reason to read it. Not because it's going to increase in value. Right. That'll be right. a nice side effect. Right. So next up we have from Dark Horse, we have Rise of the Black Flame, issue one of five. Yep. Um... More, more stuff from the Magnolia universe, basically. Um, this is the first, basically, holy book that doesn't have any John or Cootie, um influence on it. There have been some other books that have been written that, that Chris, Rob Chris Robinson is the new John Arcudi. He's the new guy that's kind of taken over to help Magnolia really right, produce. produce the books and stuff like that. Um, and this is the first one that's really just been him and Mike sitting down doing it. It hasn't had John influences in it. And despite this being called The Rise of the Black Flame, for those of us who have a long any kind of a real history with the Mingle Universe, the Black Flame has shown up multiple times throughout um, um, time and is this giant evil element. He's helped the Nazis. He's helped Rasputin. Yeah, he's been he's, you know, Currently, he was this uber god that Liz and... Um, um, Johan fight in the current um, hell on earth kind of a thing. Um, so he's just kind of an interesting element in that. And they do in the very first couple pages, I think they do kind of an interesting job of kind of giving us kind of the rollback from modern yes. time, flashing back through the different incarnations of the Black Flame. And where they came. So right. Where and, we get, and we get back to 1923, before there was a Black Flame. And we're starting this kind of story of we're in the Polynesian somewhere, Burma, that kind of places. Yes, it is Burma. Um, well, so we start out, we end up in Siam, but... Yeah, that's um, right. And um, some European children that are living there are, have been kidnapped. And that starts, of course, the, the equivalent of the Bobbies there uh, investigating. Of course, we also find out that there are there's, native... There have been Burmese, there's a Burmese child. But, but of course, and the Europeans like, well, don't. We're looking for them, too. Right. But they're just poor kids and they wander off all the time anyway, right, so who cares exactly. about that? But anyway, that's so we get this kind of cool. element. Uh, we tie into some Witcher people, people who are part of the... Um, uh, the Witcher stuff, which I have not read. I've not read any of that stuff. That was that stuff that was set in the 1920s. Most of it in kind of England and whatnot. Uh, another paranormal hunter, whatnot. Yeah. We run into this woman who's fabulous. You know, she's yeah. basically she's a, pretty awesome. She's basically a woman. That, uh, what we are led to believe is before her time. Even though probably if we actually lived during that time, there are probably lots of women who equi did the equivalent of putting on pants and did the dirty work. That, that women, never, of course, in the 20s never got credit for her and whatnot. But she's that kind of a woman. Her and a French woman are in their hunting. They, they've heard about these sacrifices and whatnot. And they basically team up with these two policemen that are on the side in Siam. And there's a cult that's yes. supposedly sacrificing people and has something to do with the Black Flame. Maybe not directly, but something. That's what we're going to find out. Right. Um, with Christopher Mitten doing the artwork, it's a new artist. I, I like the new artist. Oh yeah, I like the art. Um, it's it's almost got an our old school vertigo kind of feel to it. Whatnot, wonderful colors as always. Mm -hmm. um, Dave Stewart colors everything that's in the Magnolia universe, so it has it always has it always maintains the same 
the same the palette. Yellow palette, yep. We've you know that, that lots of times. You know that and the universe awesome. has its own palette. You get some cool look, some flashes at some monsters that they fought in the past and whatnot. And, and um, you know, we get some kind of we get a, a brief history of this woman. This is the woman. She's just she's great. Yeah, she's pretty fabulous. I, um, I just I actually really like this book, and it's currently since Hellboy and Hell, which I also really enjoyed. Mm -hmm. um, I think I like this about the best, maybe because. Um, I feel like the the BPRD um, and the Abraham Abe Sabian, Abe Sabian books mm -hmm. just kind of went on for so long and they went so many different places and there were so many different threads that it was getting hard for me to keep them all straight. I love all that. And I know you do. Maybe I have a simpler mind than you. I don't know. I don't think so, though. Oh, man. There are times when... <laughs> The disembodied voice almost embodies some body parts. <laughs> At any rate. Yeah, but I really liked it. It's I'm looking forward to seeing what happens next. Yeah, yeah, for sure. For sure. Cool. Okay, next up we have this wonderful pink cover of Paper Girls issue number nine. Yep. I'm still really... This is a this mega book. fun book. It is really fun. And we have three now. Now three errands. Three errands. Old Clone, Aaron, uh, uh, yeah. Clone Aaron, and our young Aaron, and our Aaron that we started out with in the beginning, yeah. the actual truly from the '80s Aaron, and the chewed up and the chewed up um, field hockey stick that says "Don't trust Aaron," right? Uh, Which one? We don't. And, know. and it could be a trap. Exactly. The whole thing could be a trap. So we have no clue. Yeah, we are really running blind <laughs> to this whole thing, and it's super fun. Yeah, it is really fun. And every just, element about it is just a hoot. And, well, except for the part that what's her name is going to die of leukemia potentially. Oh, even that's fun. That part's not so great. Oh no, even that's fun. Well, I know cause even that's, that's fun because because she's just got this incredible self, you know, self-destructive. Like, I know how I die, so I'm not worried yeah. about any of this stuff. She's like, oh, you know? that's true. That's Somebody true. throws a car at her head, and she's kind of like, you know, whatever. That's not well, going to no, kill she's me. She's fighting a maggot. And she's like, that's not how I die, so right. I don't know why you're worried. Right. I know that's true, and it's it's just really well, it's really enjoyable, and it's it sounds like. Um, not to use them as, well, I'm going to use them as Marvel word, like some various parasitic or small things that were small in Clone Aaron's world uh -huh. somehow got, here's the word, embiggened. embiggened. Yes. And she's like, be thankful I didn't have head lice because a maggot comes and then there's... Well, some... yeah, the maggot's the size of a car. Exactly. So The water bears, the water bears, I mean, that one's rideable size, but there are some that are as big as skyscrapers. Yes. So... You know, fighting in the bay. She's pretty... Pretty, so that's where that's coming from. It's something that yeah. somehow they, they when got, they cross through time, they got made some larger. things. Some things don't keep the same size, right? Yeah. Yeah. And so yes, it's a good thing we don't have the attack of the killer giant head lice because that would be terrible. And ew. Yeah. Um, but I basically all of the errands are together now, aren't they? Kind of. Yeah. And so it's going to be interesting to find out. And, what they're, and they're getting next. ready to jump to the fifth plane. Right. Future. Right, so that so, should be interesting. Yeah, lots and lots of fun with these occasional kind of serious moments. The Brian yeah. King Vaughn is doing an excellent job. Does with in in yes. Saga too. Saga, you can just be absolutely laughing your ass off about something, and then you'll get hit, get slapped with this kind of something this really piece pointed. of dialogue that you're just like going, oh, you know, the continued poor older Aaron feeling judged constantly by these younger versions of herself who and still her who are still and her friends who still you know are at that age where they they envision great things for themselves because you don't I mean you're not when you're, you're, you're 12, not 13 years right old. you don't you don't envision that you're going to just kind of be dredging through life of the the adult grind you haven't you haven't that, that, is, that hasn't don't know what that, is. that hasn't occurred to you yet and of course here is the adult Aaron, who's fine, really, yeah, but she's living the adult grind that, that you know that you get stuck in a lot and whatnot, and it's just it's harsh. That's just that I, I they keep kind of dipping back in that. It's like, wow, yeah, I just can't imagine. Yeah. The I, I have a hard like, time. How are you, you know, still here doing I, this? Right, I just keep thinking. I just keep thinking, man. You know, twelve-year-old Travis. What, what you know? Uh, oh, he'd think I was cool, but you know, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> no, he'd go, oh my God, that's what you're doing with your life. What a waste. Um, anyway, but um, yeah. So I'm just there's those that's great elements about Brian K. Vaughn book. Yes, as, as always, and, it's, and it's Cliff Chang is great artist. Makes it all makes it all cool and lots of fun. Yes. Next up, another bright and cheery, laugh your ass off book, Killer Be Killed issue number two. Yeah. And of course, I'm totally lying about that. I'm 
I don't know. I want to like this more than I do. Okay. But I I trust these two. I trust Brubaker Phillips. And, you know, it's a contemporary piece and not a period piece. So I'm just going to keep riding their, their wave and see what happens. I really enjoyed the issue. This um, is, I liked it better than the first one. Right. I mean, we only deal with... How really, he learns to be a killer. Right. We only deal with the demon element just in conversation, not that they're actually, that's actually there and whatnot. Still debatable whether or not he's really seen that or exactly what. Um, so, yeah, we kind of... I like how each issue starts out with him in an advanced state and then him going, oh, yeah, right. You I, weren't here for that. I, I ended to go back here first. I forgot. I'm, I'm still telling you this story and, back here. So I like that element. I like that element because it, it, it leaves us knowing there's something that happens well into the future. But it's going to give us lots of story before we get to that point in the future. Yeah. So I'm, I'm all happy with that that kind of story element. If they're going to keep doing that, that's that's fine. I got a, a fun, this is the style of the book. We're always going to get that kind of element if they continue with that. So I think that's great and whatnot. I, well, one thing I think is really funny about this issue in particular is I start to read it. And, and I'm not a gunophile, but I have a fair amount of knowledge about firearms in, right. in general. Yes, you do. And it shows the very beginning of this, it shows him opening up this gun and he, and he breaks it open. So it's like a Shetfield pistol. You know, breech loaded. Pistols aren't made that way anymore. And I'm like, why the hell is he using, why the hell are they showing him using that kind of a gun? His first thought in my head is, uh, this happened to be something that sticks out glaringly to me. Right, and later they um, explain it though. Right, that's what I'm going to talk about. Sorry. The fact that I'm like I'm going oh I'm betting this is just some element that the artist saw this somewhere and thought ooh that's what I want to draw so he's gonna draw that because it looks so much more interesting to have this gun opened up and 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 feeding the rounds into the chamber and whatnot you know kind of a thing and um, um, and I'm just thinking oh this is I'm I don't think oh I'm gonna jump all over this boy it's gonna be in this video it's gonna be on the round table I'm gonna I'm gonna point out how these guys are just this is just ridiculous that they'd be using the and then about halfway through the issue, you know, it goes back, he's telling the story, and he's got a, oh yeah, you know, he's telling the story. He gets the gun from his dad, that his dad has stored away someplace. So it's a really old gun. So it's, com it's completely what it's supposed to be. I'm right. like, oh, fine, be that way, <laughs> damn it. You know? Because yeah, he's asking his drug dealer. His, the guy that gives him his prescription. Uh, uh, yeah, okay, his drug dealer. Um, if he has guns. And he's like, why the hell do you think I have? It's right. bad, you know. Right. You want to get pulled over for drugs and firearms. Well, no, he doesn't want to. He doesn't carry a gun because he doesn't want to. He oh, does not right. want to get. He does not want to get killed. Having a gun gets you killed. Like if somebody wants to rob him. If somebody wants to rob him, he'll give him the entire van worth of pharmaceuticals. He does not care as long as he gets to walk home to his wife and kids. It that's does not right. matter. He can replace anything that's in there. So, but he says, though, what he says is. If you want a you want a gun that's not traceable, well, you break into some old person's yeah, house. Yeah, some old geezer who's had the same gun in his bureau drawer yeah. since the beginning of time. Yeah, and yeah. that's a lot easier to deal yeah. with. So, that's also one of the wonderful <laughs> things about the Brubaker Phillips books and whatnot is you get these wonderful ways of telling backstories about the people yes. that just kind of fit into it. So we learn about, about we learn about his dad that his dad basically wanted to be an illustrator, wanted to be a comic book person or whatever that kind of thing, and he ends up. Basically, his real job is mostly he is doing that kind of, um, I guess it would be porn of the yeah. era. Yeah, um, not quite porn, porn. Well, right. So he d he does the illustrations for all the fantasy and and sci-fi pulp books of the you know late fifties and early sixties and into the seventies. I think um, those kinds of where the story is mostly boils down to about sex in some fashion or another really and it's loosely hidden around the elements of those those sci-fi or or fantasy tropes and so he has all these magazines they, yes. they illustrate that really awesomely yes. in the book um and but he becomes revered and highly collectible and and loved for, for, for that aspect of his life which is not what he wanted to do no and doesn't he end up he kills himself yeah he commits suicide yeah yeah i find out that but just a cool way of telling those kinds of yeah. elements of the story. And I like so, that part so of, of course, that just adds to the backstory of why is our main character the way he is? Why does he do the things he does? And all that kind of stuff and whatnot. And just that that really he's also explaining that it used to be a thing that his buds and he would drag out. Oh, yeah. Dad's stuff. Poor. Uh -huh. um, and that's how he found out that one of his friends was being abused. And now sure. that's who he's going to kill. The abuser. Yeah. Well, it does. 
not mm-hmm. going to. That's... No, but that's who he decides. Right. Because he wants to kill bad people. Right, right. right. I, I, think it's a, I think it's an interesting book. I really enjoy it. Um, clearly the art is amazing and whatnot. Um, interesting way of telling sequential um, stories in this. I've noticed that there's a couple books that the, this element has started popping up in. Um, they've made the choice. I'm dig it out here. Uh, they've made the choice for some of this stuff to tell it with the art to one side and the narrative boxes to actually be out on the shoulder um, in this big wide gutter off to the side telling the narrative. Um, and most of this stuff was just purely in his head. I noticed generally, you know, we get quite a bit of that. And then, and then when he, you know, he, when he's in his head and talking to people at the same time, then it becomes the more the traditional kind of uh, uh, panels and gutters and, and stuff. Um, so that's interesting. I thought, originally I thought, oh, they're just doing that when he's just in his head, but that's not always the case. I mean, because you get this where he's purely in his head and it's not that kind of element. So I was just curious as to why, they, why they're choosing to do that. I'm, I'm still rereading it to try to decide exactly from a craftsman standpoint exactly why... Oh, you should show them that. I'm okay. not going to show that. Um, that's too bad. It's really pretty. So why those elements, why they tend to do those elements that way. Um, so, yeah. Just curious. One of those kind of things that at some point um, I hope to have a conversation with Philip Sarbubaker and ask why they made the choices that they've made to um, um, to pan out that way. Because I also know that um, that they do some of that in Deadly Class too. Um, yeah. In there though, it's it's part of a pacing kind of thing too, and this seems less pacing oriented. Anything else you want to say about that? Uh, no. So, next up we have Revival, issue number 42. Rolling towards the end. Yes. I don't, I don't really want to talk a ton about this book, other than I continue to really love it. There's great elements in it. The big thing about this issue is, at the end of it, we get the reveal, with no rhyme or reason as to why, as who it is that killed yeah. Emily at the very end of this. Yes. We, we get, so now I'm thinking... Damn, do I need to go back and read 41 issues? I was to see the if there's see if there were ticking and elements. Because this guy, and I'm not gonna name who it is at all, um, this guy, so I always tell you that, it's a guy, um, you know, has been in the book throughout the whole thing, not all the time, but has been sure. in the book the whole thing, and has always kind of been weird in weird. a sense. Yes. Just kind of off kilter a little bit. And so I don't now I, I I'm so looking forward to the next issue because I Surely hope, because the detective barge in and says, the butler did it, basically. And then that's it. We don't get the, right. we don't get the why, the how, the, you know, the, you know, all those other things that come along with a murder mystery and, and who it is being exposed. Is this really the person? How did she come to that conclusion? Because we as the reader have not yeah, been filled in. We have in. no clue. So I'm really excited about yeah, that for that. Yeah. But I continue to like the book. The book is in meltdown stage. We'll oh, say that about it right now because so because the town basically has reached it, it. It reached the boiling over point as far as keeping a a city quarantined for damn near a year. Um, you know, the military is shooting people. The people are 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 basically shooting the military. The ghosty things are running around. Uh, the military outside the quarantine zone is 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 organizing a scorched earth policy. They are literally going to blow the entire town yeah, of Wasilla. Yeah, they, they, they are going to they're going to raise Wasilla to the ground. Which is pretty terrifying cuz everybody we know and love that we've become attached to over the last Well, can you imagine them picking a city? Wasilla really exists in Wasa. Wisconsin. Isn't it Wasa? It really exists in Wisconsin. Yes. Can you imagine them picking a city in Wisconsin and just deciding to basically blow it up till there's nothing left in the entire place? Gold dragon house, I'm not gonna say it right off the All it says is a rural central Wisconsin. Okay. Anyway, wherever they are, it is a real place. I just thought that it was Wasa. Because they talk about Wasa a lot. Mm. Isn't that them just abbreviating Wasilla? Um, okay, whatever. Um, One of us is right. The only reason why I know is that stupid. Insurance company W A U S A. Oh, any, any rate, still a wonderful book. Uh, recommend it in trades for those people who haven't been riding along. Um, just it's cool. I think there's like five issues left. I think or something like that of it wow. to see what what gets answered, what doesn't get answered, or whatever. Good stuff. 
Yep. Good, good stuff. And finally, Norman. We're back. Issue number 11. The daughter's cartoon is still my favorite part. The guest artist, um, uh, Amy Lennox, is doing that. She's a watercolorist, yeah. famous for doing diary type stuff. And also did Plutona here recently. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, love that. Um, and we're about to operate. Maybe or not. Yeah. On Strange. On Strange. Um, and we also have some of the... Well, the superpower people have been kind of sent out. They've got a kind of a mission. Let's gather up this stuff. Clearly, um, people are getting exposed. They shouldn't be getting exposed to whatever this element is. <clears throat> Excuse me. This element is that's changing people physically or mentally or whatever kind of thing. Um, and um, some of them have actually ran into the guy that's basically exposed everybody uh, on purpose um, down in, like, okay. some... Sewery yeah. subway tunnel type stuff. And so that's going to be a whole element. It's going to be really interesting yeah. to see how that all pans out. I'm really enjoying this book. I'm still really enjoying it. Um, I think I would enjoy it more if it came out a little more consistently. Consistently, uh, once it started back up again, once they got their artist problems taken care of, it seemed like we got a couple books right away, yep. and then boom, we had this big gap, and now we get another book. Uh, I don't know where the breakdown is as far as the books coming out a little more consistently. That would help. Um, with this, because yeah. the way it's written and the stories being told, it's it is to some degree a slow burn as far mm -hmm. as these elements. That is, everything just kind of ticks along, and then the pieces fall into place, and you get this kind of big exposure right. of some sort. Um, and those elements don't work so well if that's taking an issue or two for those pieces to click together. Because if it's been three months since the last time we started to see the pieces click together. You we start to read this know. one, you forget you I think we're missing the small stuff, the small yes, detail have elements. To go back and see. We're missing the small elements. We're just, we're relying on the big moments, the big moments of Don rushing in saying, Don't operate Don't do on it. him, you know, kind of yeah. stuff and whatnot. But I also you know, I said that I like the, the cartoon part, the diary uh -huh. cartoon part of this. I also really do like the adventures of the other powered people, the changed people as right. they're trying to go and find the rest of their Really, the rest of their their crew and also <clears throat> the exposer. So to right, speak. right. Because they also go pick up what's his name at the. Yeah, the guy they thought had died. Yes. He's basically a ghost. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's what he, that's what his power ended up being. Yeah. And of course, he's all pissed at them because they left him behind. Exactly. And and, and, and because and he's, he's like, a, why are you so he's using at, that mirror thing? Because that so blew us all thing. up. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's, he's so out of the loop, kind of a deal, yeah. whatnot. Yeah. And I, I really like Kurt. And, you know, when the monster guy says, your kid's going to like you or whatever, yeah. and he just looks so... Right, well, it's, you know, oh, yeah. Because Kurt's, Kurt's this big red monster-looking dude. Uh, and, he, you know, he's telling the guy, oh, it, it won't be so bad. You know, and the other guy, the, the other scientist guy, the bad guy in this whole thing, yes. basically. Um, uh, you know, he's like, oh, yeah, right. I mean, he's a monster. I mean, he really looks like a frightening monster. And he's like, oh, yeah, right you know, Dr. Whatever, Kirk, you know, and he's like, so how freaked out is your son when he sees you, huh? Which, of course, is a concern of his. His family has not seen him since he became a big giant monster. Yeah. Big giant red monster dude. So, yeah, there's yeah, some poignant exactly. things in there. And I, I like the way that they build each other up, though. The people themselves. Yes. They're a team. Like, they're a team and, and they've stuck like, a team. You rock. They, you just totally ripped that door off. Right. And have been able to do that. Right. You know, just, they are very supportive of each other in I, that sort I of really a team like building. I really like how they are to each other. Yeah. If you're somebody that had to spend a lot of time up in space in, in small quarters with a bunch of other people, they have that feel. They have that feel. Yeah, they, they figured out. They have figured out how to operate, you know, together. And, and so, yeah, they are supportive of each other. It's cool. Yeah. I like that part. Yeah. So. Yeah. So enjoy it. And a two ninety nine book and you're hundred percent getting your dollar value for it because yeah, absolutely. everything except for uh like a quarter of the back page has got all the Anisha stuff on it, the you know, vice president of, of of whoever. Otherwise, every single lick of this comic is comic. Otherwise you open it up on the inside, it's the beginning of comics, and it is comics of some sort all the way through to the very end, which is always awesome that you're getting that kind of value yes. out of the book. So True. No ads, none of that kind of stuff. So, all stuff. Yeah. Anyway, 
Uh, until next week, when it'll be huge, because I gain crazy amount of books. Uh, we'll see you then. Bye. See ya.